Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. My name is Jared Lee, and I'm joined, as usual, by my lovely wife, Jamie Lee. So, Jamie, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm a, I'm a little coming off of being frustrated as we... If you're watching this right oh, now on YouTube, uh, we, we kind of were redoing the studio. I don't really buy... I don't buy into the new year, new you stuff. Like, New Year's resolutions really aren't my thing. But I was like, you know... Time to maybe not use the green screen. So mm-hmm. where we have this setup, which if you're seeing this, this isn't going to be the final look, but <laughs> uh, playing with it because we have a lot of like Legos and like, you know, you have stuff that you've collected and your mom's collected over the years that would be nice to be able to like display. Yeah. So we're kind of working on it. Right now we just have a Lego Infinity Gauntlet. It's the only thing. But lonely on its own. It looks like it's yeah. So, uh, what you're seeing won't be the final product, but it's a it's a work in progress. So so far, it's uh, you know I'm learning a lot more about lighting. Yeah, kind of going for like a dark. I like that look of like a dark background, and obviously you have you know your studio light on you. So just trying to figure some of that out. Like we haven't seen daylight for years. Well, we look. That's the ambiance, right? Well, yeah, it's <laughs> like you're you're podcasting from your basement. That's right. Uh, whatever it is, but anyways. So that's, uh, you know, we went to Ikea. Sure did. To, which we realized, which I think is always the case, Ikea takes you at least two hours. Because if you're going to walk through Ikea. <laughs> like minimum. <laughs> yeah. Although you can, and I've done this before, you can go straight to the part where you just pick the stuff from the warehouse. Oh, absolutely. But if you walk through that thing and like our kids are with us, so our kids, they, they want to sit on all the furniture, you mm-hmm. know, and like all that mm-hmm. stuff. So, and then your parents are with us. So it was, you know, we came to get one thing and we left with a lot more because they had like, I think it was like 70% off of some stuff. So a big winter sale. Yeah. Yeah. So you never know when you need a random vase that Ikea sells. I did. I I found a planter that I wanted for like $3. I was like, this is coming home. And they have weird stuff too. Like they have markers and they had like a bunch of like we got some kids uh, like plates and cups for like $2. For like six of them. Yeah, like, it's kind of okay. interesting. Ikea is Ikea's an interesting place, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, so if you're watching us uh, on YouTube and stuff, you'll see this evolve mm-hmm. as, uh, you know, Jamie has some Legos she hasn't put together yet. Like la- your Christmas present last year, you still haven't put together, which is your Back to the Future. I still haven't. DeLorean. No. Uh, I, haven't. I did have Optimus Prime put together and then he fell. So I have to reassemble him. Yeah. But then Jamie got like me the Captain America Lego shield for Christmas. I did. So, and then you have, I think you had bought the Walt statue. I did. Not uh, the full size um, one, obviously. The Walt, the Walt, um, the Dreamer's Point one in Epcot. They, they did like a bronzed uh, mm-hmm. version of it. Yeah. And I did buy one of those. So I, I think it would look really good behind us. Yeah. So we will, this will probably, I think I'm going to get another one of these book shelf case things behind us but yeah either way so you'll see that evolve if you're watching the show and if not then it probably won't seem any different to you so <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> so <laughs> that's what's going on with us yes. other than there was a random winter storm yesterday which i think was just what everybody else got snow we just got rain and a, a lot of wind but yeah i yeah, think I i'm pretty sure that's wind. what everybody else had was the, the snow because i saw some people in club 32 post about a bunch of snow mm-hmm. i think it just when it gets to florida it just decides to rain a lot but mm-hmm. but uh yeah so today though we have it, it'll be a fun show so we have some news we're going to talk about and then we're going to talk about 10 reasons why you should visit festival of the arts this year yeah or as some people like to call it farts, which I don't like calling it that. Yeah, we're not going to call it that on the show anymore. I just shorthanded it. <laughs> no, like we, you were you were talking to me the other day about it. I'm like, I just, I feel like, because I, I like Vessel of the Arts. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I feel like when you call it farts, it just doesn't, you know. It's just, yeah, it's I like understand. You, you know, I won't, it's a, I won't it's call it that anymore no, you, today. Listen, you can call it whatever you would like. I'm just saying. I just shorthanded it because I was like, I don't want to write it all out. And I know what that means. But yeah, for purposes of the show, we will be using the full Festival of the Arts name. Unless we come up with some cool. Because we're real appropriate. Appropriate. That's appropriate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. You're, You're correct. You're welcome. That is appropriate. Uh, yeah. So that's what we're going to do on this show today. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we get to the news, just want to remind everybody, if you are watching us on YouTube, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. Is it 
helps us to continue to grow. Uh, the brand new YouTube channel we started just for the podcast at CTM Podcast. And if you're listening to us on podcast, if we just if you would love to leave us a review wherever you're listening on, we'd greatly appreciate that. And of course, if you'd like even more content, you should check out Club 32. And that's basically our own version of our Patreon where we have additional content, a cool place to hang out. We have live streams when we're in the parks. We have live streams that are shows that we do from home. We have Cool Kids Kitchen where we cook and make a Disney dish. The Club 32 Speakeasy, which I will be doing more of those coming up when we have the, the meetup as well coming up next weekend. So if you're going to be in Disney and you want to be a part of that, you can join us there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a private podcast feed. We have a private Facebook group and Discord. You get 20% off of CTM Apparel and 1901 Candle Company products. And we're always looking to do new stuff in there. So it, you know, a lot of times the members will just say, hey, let's do this. And if we can do it, we will make it happen. Mm -hmm. So if you want to head on over there, you can go to ctmvip.com. We have monthly or yearly options. If you do a yearly, you get a free t-shirt. And you can even do a free trial if you want to try it out and see if it's for you. So... Because uh, we'll probably be doing some live streams from uh, the meetup since it's a Club mm -hmm. 32 meetup and we'll mm -hmm. be doing so we'll do some live streams from there. So anyways, ctmvip.com is where you go for there. And if you would like to join, we'd love to have you. So, all right, well, let's get to the news. And the first one that we have might seem like good news <laughs> in the short term, <laughs> but in the long term, yet to be determined. We'll put it that way. In Jared's opinion. <laughs> um, Country Bear Jamboree is closed beginning January 27th. <laughs> That's a great way to start the year. Uh, you know, you are, you are one of the people that is not ha not sad about this. If you're um, new to the show, this is an ongoing thing I've had with bears most of my life. But uh, yeah. Not a fan of bears. Um, so the show will be updated and they're going to use some new songs that are like country music styles. And I think there'll be a lot more Disney songs, which is kind of cool. Um, it will reopen later this summer. No word. And if they're fixing the animatronics, I don't know if that's on the agenda. I have a feeling they're going to, I hope it is. They're going to get some, you know, they're going to get a little oil, you know, a little oil. get rid of some of the creeks and things. I highly <laughs> doubt we're going to see new animatronics considering um, those are pretty expensive. Yeah. I feel like I need to watch it one last time just because I haven't actually sat through this show since I was probably 10 years old. So I was like, oh, well, it's changing. I better I better go in and watch it real quick. I saw it a few years ago know. and it's... Um, it's it's interesting how very pretty inappropriate the show is. I would say for families. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's been like the sentiment lately. People are like, "Well, let's." Well, some of those songs are a little dicey. Again, I mean, they're bears, so they are dicey. you know you can't yeah. expect bears to have morals because mm -hmm. uh, they're bears. Mm -hmm. If you ever know anything about them, you would know why. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's for okay. So taking my personal bias out of this, which as a you know professional that I am. Oh, gosh. I will try and do that. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm not professional about anything. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> maybe some things, but not this one. I would say if you enjoy this show, I guess potential, I guess the risk you have here is if you really love it, um, changing it may not be the for the best. I, I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. So we'll wait and see how it goes. But I guess the best case scenario is you do have an updated show that's better. If you like the Country Bears, then maybe they'll, they won't look so demonic. I, you know, one can only hope. <laughs> like the blinking where you can hear it and they stare oh, like lifelessly click, at click, you. Just, it's click. just, yeah. I feel like it's the stuff of nightmares. But, yeah. you know, maybe that stuff will get better. I, sh you know, song wise, who knows um, in terms like that. But uh, yeah, either way, it's getting an update and we, we will see how it goes. But in the short term, I think we'll probably still see the country bears out there, you know, when they kind of walk around. Oh, they're roaming. They're roaming yeah. around. So, I mean, yeah. they, they have nowhere to, nowhere to go now. <laughs> right. So, they're just going to be out and about a lot right. now. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. All right. Our next story is, given that park hopping has returned, or at least you can park hop whenever you want mm -hmm. now. You're not restricted to only after 2 o'clock. Uh, park hopping transportation has started earlier in the day now. Yeah. So, buses running from park to park will begin service at 10 a.m., now that they have been re the restrictions have been lifted and then magic kingdom and epcot will not run buses so you'll have to take the monorail to hop over from them the epcot to magic kingdom so which is normal unless the mm -hmm. monorail goes down then they'll run the buses yeah but. and uh you can still always take the boat from epcot to hollywood studios 
Uh, you can still walk and everything. You can still take the the Skyliner. That was the, the you know, those are still running, you know, all the time. So, mm-hmm. so there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, next story we have is that Genie Plus is getting even more confusing, involving those that still have to make park reservations, which is annual pass holders, basically annual pass holders and non date based tickets. Yeah. So there's definitely there's definitely more people that this is not going to affect since there's way more people going to the parks that have the date based tickets and they don't have to worry about this. But if you are an annual pass holder, um, there's a little bit of a hiccup in the genie plus lightning lane system. You need to be aware of, um, that kind of kind of was brought to everyone's attention whenever park hopping restrictions were lifted on Tuesday. So, um, a lot of people were saying, in the park, um, they went to the the blue tents and they went to guest services to saying that they were having trouble making Genie Plus Lightning Lane selections um, for parks that weren't their primary park. So what that means is they had a park pass for, let's say, Magic Kingdom, and they were unable to make a Genie Plus selection for um, a park that was not there, that was not Magic Kingdom. So let's say they were trying to make it for Epcot at like, yeah, I don't know, 4 p.m. or something. Um, basically, they're saying that if you are an annual pass holder, if you are, have a non-date based ticket and you have a park reservation, you cannot make a Genie Plus selection for a park that you haven't scanned into. Like, so, okay, so let's say you're, again, you're going to Magic Kingdom that day. You haven't scanned in yet to Magic Kingdom. You could only make Genie Plus selections for Magic Kingdom at that point. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So once you scan into Magic Kingdom, you can make park park or you can uh, make Genie Plus reservations at any of the parks. But it's not until you scan into that first park does it like unlock the system, if you will. They were still people were still only able to do it until uh, after two p.m. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's just something to like keep in mind if you're an annual pass holder. I don't know if this will this will be always the case. I think that maybe this is just something they're trying out. I don't know, um, but keep it in mind if you if you gotta go to that first park if you wanna if you wanna stack basically because I think that's what a lot of people were trying to do. Yeah, I mean if you think about it, this is the first time, and this is one reason they probably delayed getting rid of, rid of like park hopping and you know want, wanting to delay getting rid of park reservations as long as they could is because Genie Plus has only existed under the you know having park reservations and not being able to park up to after two so genie plus now is in uncharted waters if you will mm-hmm. for that so i'm sure there will be changes you know there's always like disney's so big any you know small change can become a really big issue on the back end when you think about how much the app is involved in your you know your trip and just going to the park on a given day now so yeah. there's a lot of things that go into even just a small change so I would, yeah, I'm sure we'll see some updates to the app or some changes they'll make here and there. So hopefully this, I, I could see this being an issue, especially if you're trying to get the most out of Genie Plus. So I feel like maybe this is a short-term thing, but I, I don't know. Is there a reason why you think they might keep it? Like a, a, in terms of like having this as a, not a feature, but like a, a limitation on people? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? I, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know enough about Genie Plus. Like we use yeah. it sometimes, but... We don't really, I, I wouldn't say we've ever called ourselves Genie Plus experts in terms of like exactly how to stack it like crazy. I mean, we've done it before, well, but I don't know in terms of maybe they're trying to stop people from stacking to say, take up a bunch of I mean, I didn't spaces. think about that being the reason. I didn't think about them saying like, okay, this will keep the you know pass holders who are very familiar with Genie Plus and the, and the way it works, how to stack, you know, like five or six attractions in the evening to keep them from doing that. You know, let's say they like go to work during the day and then at five o'clock they pop into Hollywood Studios and just do their GD plus. Well, they can't do that now. Right. I mean, it could be a way in which the I mean, they did say there's going to be changes to Genie Plus this year. A lot of the assumptions were that this would be you know, you've always had the issue with Genie Plus is like the pass holders and people who go a lot like the system now because they they can game it like that. They can stack it they can write a lot of stuff on it. Whereas the people who, you know, first time guests or people that don't go a lot, there's a little bit of a, you know, I'm not gonna say super steep, but there's a learning curve to it. 
And I think they've, I felt they may be trying to create a system that's sort of like a merge between Genie Plus and like the old FastPass system. Maybe mm-hmm. this is part of it where they're just trying to limit the amount of, you know, the way Genie Plus works. You have like reservations essentially for a mm-hmm. ride. They're trying to prevent, you know, people eating up a bunch of reservations like later in the day or leaving those for people who are actually like in the parks. That could be the reason as to why. But maybe again, this could be something they change like tomorrow. So, <laughs> you well, know, they haven't come out and said anything specifically. Well, just I'm going to go into the next story because it kind of connects what we're talking about. Speaking of tomorrow, which for us is the 11th, um, Disney has announced that their good to go days will be posted basically on the park pass calendar. And the, what those are, if you're not familiar the good to go days are the days that pass holders don't need a park pass reservation so they can just show up to any park without a reservation and as we were talking about with the restriction with genie plus just now that does not apply to those days because they don't need the park reservation yeah um so yeah so i'm i'm excited to see what those days are on the calendar they're marked the green circle and again, I don't know how many there will be per month. I don't know if, you know, they'll change them and they'll have them and then they'll take them away. I, you know, we just, we just aren't familiar just yet as of recording this. So, well, the one thing it's Disney's coming. always constant about is uh, things change, especially in they the do. app and things. They so, do change. I yes. guess we will see. I mean, if this is still the case after a few weeks, I would say this is probably something that is now a feature of the system. The Genie Plus thing, yeah, yeah. If you want to keep, if you want to say that, yeah. so. But I'm excited about the good to go days. But yeah, the anyway. good to go days are good. Yeah, good to go days are good. Good to go, good to go. All right. Uh, next story we have is the capture your moment photo pass sessions are coming to Galaxy's Edge now. Not to be confused with capture the magic photo pass. I'm just kidding. Well, they say they get capture the magic capture. Your that's moment. a very know. exclusive uh, <laughs> service that I t- <laughs> we've bought them out. It involves for. an iPhone <laughs> and good lighting. Anyways, yeah. right. Uh, okay, so for ninety nine dollars, you'll get a twenty minute photo session with a quote unquote Batu image specialist. Uh, Is that what they're actually calling it? That's they. I don't know if they jokingly <laughs> said that, but they're just photo pass photographers. I hope it's somebody in a Chewy costume <laughs> that know. just screams at you like Chewy. <laughs> uh, bookings open January seventeenth, with available spots beginning January twenty fourth. You can book up to sixty days in advance. So it's basically just like the capture the magic cap, capture your moment photo session. All, all the the rest of the parks and the rest of the areas. It's just this is con- uh, concentrated to Galaxy's Edge. You can get all your Jedi poses in. I mean, if you're a big Star Wars fan, this is this might be like something you really want to do. I feel like the way though, like I really feel like how cool would it be if, you know, you could have like Darth Vader as the I mean, they don't they don't let Darth Vader in Galaxy's Edge, which that's a whole other conversation. But let's say you had <laughs> Chewie as your photographer and he's just, you know, instead of giving you directions, he's like, he's just that was a terrible <laughs> Chewie. But I'm just saying, like he just he yells at you and you know as Chewy does. I think it'd be kind of funny. I mean, I mean, your pictures may not be that good, but the experience. They have like fuzzy fingers in the, yeah. s- in the <laughs> shot. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what like, happened. But it was a good time. That would be cute. That would be kind of like a little, um, a little uh, sprinkling to your, to your vacation. Chewy yeah. day in your photos. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. you'd. Ha- I honestly, I feel like a lot of people would probably book those because. Yeah. You know. And just a reminder with these capture your moment photo pass sessions, they do not include the actual photos. So you would need to either buy Memory Maker or a one-day Memory Maker package or have the add-on uh, if you're an annual pass holder. Which mm-hmm. I think that is... <sighs> yeah, I know. I mean, if you're buying the thing, like, just, like, how silly is that? I feel like you should just be like, if you're buying the package, you get the pictures. That's like well, going and hiring a photographer to take your wedding pictures. And they don't And then they're like, oh, well, you didn't buy the download package. You're like, what do you mean? Well, I took the pictures, but you can't get them unless you buy the download package. Like, that's just, you know, come on. Yeah. Well, that's that's the way they do it. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Chewy would not be happy with this. I'm you that right now. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, the last story we have is the Florida resident ticket offer for this winter is the Disney Thrills ticket. Yeah. So available to purchase starting January 11th. That would be today if you're listening on thursday uh, experience the thrills at disney world with a two-day ticket 
for $199 plus tax. If you got an extra day to extend the magic, a three-day ticket is just $219 plus tax. This special Florida resident ticket is valid to use beginning January 11th through March 15th, even on weekends with an advanced park reservation. Okay. It's just so that you Florida have resident. to make a reservation with these. You do, yeah. but it's valid on weekends, and a lot of these tickets are not that have in the past. So you just have you know two months to use it. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder if Disney will get into this where they charge more to buy a ticket where you don't have to reserve a park. Ooh. Like, so like, okay. Because we're already, we're already seeing this. You know, obviously, the APs still have to do the park reservation. And we know Disney doesn't want to let go of it entirely. Mm-hmm. I do wonder if at some point you sit there and go, okay, a normal, like a day ticket is $145. But if you do a park reservation, you can get it for $125. Hmm. I could see them eventually doing. I don't know. I could see that's an interesting thought. Well, like it's almost like the Disney Plus thing, where it's like they want people, all the streamers do, to move toward the ad tier one because that's actually where they make the most money. Right. So they're upping the price of the one without uh, commercials and keeping the one with ads lower, like incentivizing you instead of like Mm -hmm. telling you you can't have this. They're just trying to incentivize you to buy the one that they want you to buy. Right. I don't know. I could see that being a thing. I mean, it's a good it's a good business decision for him, I guess. You know? Well, except for I I do think as time goes on and I've said this all along ever since they instituted this thing that as time goes along, this park reservation system is going to age poorly. Like people just aren't going to like it, especially now the longer you get from, you know, the reason they supposedly used it. So, I don't know. I mean, it, that way they could sit there and say, yeah, you don't have the park reservation system if you want to pay for it, essentially. I still yeah. think eventually they'll be forced to drop it altogether. But I've, I've said all along they're going to hold on to it sort of like, have you ever seen the movie Cliffhanger where he just has like a finger and he's just holding on and holding on like they're just going to just one finger left. They're just going to hold on to that thing as long as they can. But yeah, we'll see. Hopefully I didn't give Disney any ideas for that. <laughs> probably not. They probably thought of everything. Probably so. So, all right. Well, that's all the news that we have. Okay. But Jamie does have a poll time. Poll time. All right. For this week's poll time, I I reminded everybody that the dining plan returns this week. It returned on January 9th. And will anybody be adding it to their existing or new Walt Disney World vacation bookings? Tell me why or why not in the comments. So here's what we have. 54% said no. It's too pricey or too much food or too restrictive. Um, 28% said maybe. Depends on the trip. And 18% said yep. Love the dining plan. So at least half are not into the dining plan. Yeah. So, um, so we've we've talked about this before. We we don't really use the dining plan. We we've gone over the numbers in the past, and we just we just don't feel like for us to get the dining plan where we feel like we're just kind of throwing money down the drain because we don't we tend not to eat a lot at Disney, and um, you know I don't know we just we don't we don't do a lot of sit down meals. We don't do a ton of character meals. It's just not the way we tour the parks. So, you know, it's, it, it wouldn't be worth it to us. Yeah. I, I would be curious as to what this number would have been, say in like 2018, 2019. Um, that's a, gr- that's a great point. There were a couple of people that mentioned it, that they, they, they used to really like it. They used to yeah. be like, I'm a gung ho for this. And then now they're just, they're kind of thinking twice about it. Um, one, because there's been a couple of changes to the dining plan. Most notably, they dropped one of the snack credits per day. You used to have two, and now you only have one. Yeah. I I remember we talked about that, and, and you talked with Kendra about it. Like, I know, yeah, and you're paying more for getting less, which has, you know, kind of become a thing sometimes, and Disney brings things back ever since COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would be curious. I feel like more people probably would have done it in 2019. Plus, you mm-hmm. used to have, you know, more of the, uh, you know, the free dining was a thing that. Well, 
Yeah. I mean, they still offer that. We're offering it this summer. They are. You they know? are. Um, but it's it gets more and more restrictive every time they, right. they offer it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm surprised by this number that the, about half are just not going to buy it. Um, you know, I, I think if you're into a lot of like the higher price dining, like if, if you want to eat at a table service restaurant once or twice a day on your vacation every day, then I think maybe the dining plan will work for you. You know, I think, I think it'd be, might be worth it. If you're going to order the most expensive item on the menu, go for it. Um, the parts that I don't like, I don't like the fact that like all of that money that you're paying up front, which is for some people, they like to feel that inclusive feeling. I get that. But you're also not going to be paying for um, gratuity yet. Right. Like yeah. that's on after. Um, if you want more alcohol than what's included in your dining plan, that's an extra cost as well. Um, there are some restaurants that are not even included on the dining plan. Um, someone mentioned... Um, Space 220, Space 220. Was one, which yeah. uh, I forgot a, a listener, a friend of ours, Kiyomi, worked, she's worked in and around the Disney restaurants yeah. for, for years. And someone had asked, I wonder why. And I had said just offhandedly, well, third party and talking to servers over the years, a lot of them don't enjoy dealing with the dining plan in terms mm-hmm. of it's just a bigger hassle. And so the third party restaurants use a completely different like system. Than Disney does, mm-hmm. so they, especially you know, Space Two Twenty just opted out of it, and she had kind of said like, yeah, if it's big pain, so like that probably could be a reason as to like they don't want to mess with it. And I do wonder at some point like how many people like I've heard the complaint, people don't tend to tip on the dining plan because they they think that it's included, mm-hmm. sort of thing. So yeah, um, and maybe they just have the demand where they don't have to on some of these restaurants as well. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I still contend. I haven't done the math on this, but I feel like if you, you know, when Costco not that long ago and even Sam's like, they'll run deals on like Disney gift cards. Mm-hmm. I feel like that to me in, in the way my thinking is, I would rather do buy your, you know, some Disney gift cards. Even if it's not on sale, you're still saving like 5% handle your food that way. And then like, if you, you're not forced, like with the dining plan, the, the thing that we've talked about is like, you're just forced to eat so much. And you may not utilize mm-hmm. a lot of it versus like you have a gift card, you know, you may, okay, let's go eat. Okay, let's not eat. And let's say at the end of the trip, you've got some money left over. You could either save it or use it on, you know, souvenirs or something else. So you're not just solely forced to use all of that, you know, money in just food itself. Yeah. So for me, I, that's just my thinking on it though. And again, I haven't done the math on it and how that works, but, um, yeah. you know, for me, I know a lot of people do that, especially Costco. I think they had like, what was it? Was it 10% off? They run deals like that all the time. There was one yeah. not long ago. Somebody was telling me they saved like almost 200 to $300 Dang. by doing that. Yeah. So, you know, you can save a decent amount of money. For sure. Doing it that way. So, for sure. But all right. Well, thank you for the poll time. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for participating in the poll this week. I will have a new poll next week. Yes. And if you want to be part of the next poll time, you can do that in two ways. You can join the Capture the Magic Facebook community i'm tempted to change it we talk about change that name maybe capture the magic facebook family Family. and i'll get vin and be like <laughs> I'll, I'll call vin diesel and see if he'll be like well, you just welcome to the family i mean if i if i get a like really <laughs> low amount of sleep i might be able to get deep enough but we'll see all right but <laughs> yeah we might call it that either way that's the facebook group and then also over on instagram at cap the magic jamie posts those in the stories so you can vote yes. Either or both places, if you would like on that. Yeah. So, what day do you normally post those? Mondays? I Yeah, I usually post them on Mondays okay. after I do it. Mondays. Yeah. There mm-hmm. you go. Yes. All right. Well, let's move on to our discussion today, which okay. is 10 reasons you should visit Festival of the Arts this year. Yes. Uh, so as we have talked about it previously, it is uh, coming up here um, where I'm if it doesn't rain, it's supposed to storm and rain a bunch on Friday. So if it doesn't, uh, I'm going to try to go on opening day with my mother. Um, but it, it, we'll see. We're just going to play that by ear. <laughs> um, it's, a little, it's been a little rainy down here lately. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but just a little basic information. So um, Epcot International Festival of the Arts begins January 12th and runs through February 19th. This is the eighth year of the festival, and it is meant to be a, quote, celebration of creativity and cuisine, 
that is quoted from their website. So it's very much about um, celebrating the artistic nature of everything, colors and shapes mm-hmm. and performance art and visual art. And it's kind of like, you know what it is? It's like if an art teacher had a big budget. Yeah. Think about your, yeah. your kooky art teacher from high school. Yeah. I can't remember my my art teacher's name, but I remember what she looked like. I'm like, yeah, if you gave her a bunch of money, she'd do a festival like this. Like you'd have yeah. chalk art and all. That. And we'll talk about the things you yeah. can do, but it's in. I know it's your favorite festival. It is my favorite festival. That's my well. That's my one coming up here. Right. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. And that's the first topic is like number one. It's your favorite festival. It's mine. It's. I'm going to experience this year, but it, it might be mine. I've I've still okay. held out that I still enjoy food and wine because food and wine is where I really. Like when we started going to Disney, food and wine is my first festival experience I had. And I still remember, like I still remember getting a drink from the Germany Pavilion and we went and watched, um, was it Wilson Phillips? That song? Wilson Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like a really cool evening. And you're just like, well, this is really cool. Like okay. we literally just walked in. Yeah. And apparently they have other songs. <laughs> they, they, yes, they do. <laughs> now, if you're unfamiliar with Wilson Phillips. <laughs> They sing, uh, hold on, hold on, like one more day. I can't sing it because I know you got okay. listen. That's all I'm going to give you guys right there. Yeah, <laughs> the but yeah. So they had other. I remember just being like, "You guys have other songs," and they would act like everyone's supposed to know them. Then they finally did that. So one. So it's a nostalgia thing for you. I mean, a little bit. Aww. I I enjoy it, but Festival of the Arts, objectively, like there is more things to do. Yeah. Well, I'll give you some reasons it is my favorite festival, um, besides the ones that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but the the main one for me, other than the other ones, is that, you know, the, the weather. You know, it, it's not... Typically in the winter in Florida, it doesn't rain a lot. So you're not going to get a lot of downpours in January. Um, and you're not going to be, you know, in 90 degree weather, humidity. It's actually one of the main reasons it's becoming mm-hmm. one of my favorite because I mean, basically, you move to Florida uh, for the wind. I mean, you put up with the summers to deal with the weather right now, which is like yeah. during the day you don't have the humidity bearing down on you and everything that you said. So yeah, I think yeah. the weather is a big reason. Yeah, and then everything else, like it allows you to just enjoy things more. Yeah. Like I, I've always well, said, the heat is like a the heat and the. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. It's like <laughs> having like when our when our daughter gets on my shoulders. I can walk around with her for a while on my shoulders, but as the time, you're just like, oh, it's good. okay, it starts getting a little uncomfortable. Like, yeah. okay, like it's just, yeah. it just bears down on you as you keep going. Mm-hmm. And then, like, like, by if you're going hard by six or seven o'clock, you're just like, I need a nap and a drink. And, <laughs> you know, you don't have that yeah. in the winter. It, and it's much more, yeah, you feel like it's much more enjoyable. It does get darker earlier, but yeah, I feel like the weather is very nice. A big perk. It so. does. And, like, it just, I think we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, but I food and wine is my least favorite festival. And in fact, this year we didn't do any of the offerings. We did, we did nothing, <laughs> we did but you know why, you know why? First of all, it starts in July and July, August, September for me, it is just so hot to go around world showcase and experience the festival. Like I would want to, and, 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 you know, be comfortable and enjoy it. It's just too hot for me. And I was just, this year, I just wasn't willing to do it, as, as, to be perfectly honest. So, you know, with, with the Festival of the Arts, very willing to do it. Well, <laughs> this year as well, July, like we, we went back to Missouri. I mean, we were when also it busy. started because we were busy. like your sister had a baby. So like by the time yeah. we got really settled back in, it was sort of like, all right, it's only been like a month. Like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we did, it wasn't intentional. We just ended up being like, yeah, we never really made it over there. We did it. But, you know, yeah. we're sorry. We are so, we're We'll make it up with Festival of the sorry. Arts. Yeah. We're sorry. We're <laughs> sorry. But, yes. All right, let's move on to some of the, uh, the, the top. Other, the other reasons. Yeah, top, the other reasons you should go to Festival of the Arts. Because number one was because it's my favorite. So that should be your favorite, too. Well, I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of our favorites being Jamie's favorite. Okay, fine. You know. Okay, fine. Given that. But all right. The second one I would say is the food and drink offerings that they have. This year, there are 16 food studios or food booths, as we like to call them, uh, set up around the park, mostly in World Showcase. Each one has a specific theme or location the dishes are inspired by. And um, so I counted this year, there are 25 new 
offerings, uh, new items on the on the menus. And I'm gonna tr- hopefully I'm gonna get to try some of those on Friday. Uh, but I do want to point out that there are, at least it seems to me, there are less items available. Like they t- they took some items off of certain menus and didn't like replace them. For example, Mexico, the um, the Mexico food studio only has one food item this year, which is interesting. It's always had at least two, mostly three for all the other festivals. But this year there's only one. It's the carne asada, which is delicious, but it's just interesting. There's a few they've done that with. I'm wondering if, and we'll see, maybe this is something that holds true for like flower and garden and food and wine. I'm just wondering if maybe, because there, there is, there's so much to offer to people that Mm-hmm. There's just a lot of stuff that maybe they just feel like, okay, let's pare it back down because maybe there's a lot of food waste or people just aren't eating it enough or maybe Festival of the Arts in general. It could be that there's so many other things to do. Like food is a yeah. part of this festival, but it's not the really main part as the art and everything ar- around that stuff is there. So maybe they found not as many people go do the food stuff and yeah. so they just don't offer as much. But, you know, don't know. Yeah. Um, another example is the deconstructed dish which is a very popular food studio. Uh, they have taken out the deconstructed French onion soup. Which do you remember that one? I do remember that it's one. It's very interesting and it was very it's very popular, but it's gone too and I was I was kind of upset about that, not going to lie. Um one thing I would do mention there's a couple new dishes at the Craftsman Courtyard that I think that we're really going to like and it's grilled pork belly. And the other one is grilled marinated skirt steak. I mean, potentially those do sound very good. Sometimes yeah. though, like what was the booth a couple years ago with food and wine? Sounded really good. Swanky Swine, was that it? Uh, yeah. And Far- like Farmer's Feast? No. No. I think it Swanky was Swanky Swine. Swine. It was yeah. it was like ribs and yeah, things yeah. like that. That's what it was. Just was not very good. Okay. Like it all sounded great, but sure. it, everything was just very like tough and wasn't cooked well. So yeah. it does sound now those things, pork belly and Skirt steak are, mm-hmm. I, those are things I do enjoy. Right. So hopefully those are very good. Uh, let's see. Figment's inspiration station at the Odyssey. That's basically the the Figment food studio, and it has this entire building for its for itself. Um, all of the food and drink offerings are returning from last year, but there's also a new popcorn bucket. So the last two years we've had Figment, just the purple purple dragon figment uh, if you remember back in 2022 there was that giant six hour seven hour line fights in the streets over to, <laughs> to pick him up at uh, i think it was the pop eats booth back then um and then last year that you could do a mobile order to pick it up so what was much better um this year is a new bucket and it's called it's just the imagination pavilion with figment popcorn bucket and it's it literally looks like the imagination pavilion um, with like rainbow popcorn inside. A lot of jagged edges. A lot of, sh- a lot of sharp edges. Lot of, I'm still curious. Edges. The people that get these, where are they putting these things? I feel like these are one of the <laughs> hardest things to collect are popcorn buckets you given. Know, they don't know, fit yeah. neat. Like a lot of them are kind of big. Like even the thing we have back here, I don't think most of them would fit into that. So yeah. Like, yeah. There's got to be just closets that people uh, just have stuff full of popcorn buckets that Oh, for sure. I mean, I I think it's it, it looks cute, but like it's is it practical? I don't know. I mean, like I don't think people buy it because it's practical. I think they well, buy them to collect them or to actually, you know, display them or something. Calling them popcorn know. buckets has always been very loose with that language because <laughs> it's like that does technically hold popcorn, but It does. Not, it does. I would say it's like the sippers, like they're yeah. they're literally sippers because you would like right. you could take a couple of sips and it's gone. And there's there's no word on if they're doing a mobile order option this year. I would think they are. I, it seemed to go better last year. I would assume they would. Or virtual queue, whatever you want but to call But we don't know what the but. demand is for it either. I mean, the one that Figma that year was, was really big. Based on what I've seen on the socials, people are excited. So um, I'm guessing if there's enough like hype about it, they will do some kind of multiple order virtual queue thing. I don't know, though. Okay. Um, Where are you going? Don't you blow into the mic. That like blows Like if people have headphones in. Like it'll like hurt their ears. Okay, sorry. And oh, so one uh, one booth that is returning is Pop Eats, which we always enjoy. 
and they do have that they uh, tomato tomato soup with the grilled cheese and the the bacon and the pimento and remember how good that sandwich is it is it's, think it is it. good but ever since i had the tomato soup from primo piatto oh it's just like it's good but the one at primo piatto legitimately is the best tomato soup i've ever had so you would leave and the, uh, sorry, Epcot to go I'm to I'm not Pro saying I would Piatto. leave. I'm saying Primo Piatto is over at Riviera. <laughs> sorry, yes, if, if people yes. don't understand. It's the quick service over at, at Riviera. Yes. Uh, it's, oh, it's so good. <laughs> so like, I mean, this is still good, but having mm-hmm. had that, I would, man, like I, I would be tempted. That's how good it is. I would be tempted to just go over there to get a grilled cheese and tomato soup and then come back. It's that good. But it is, it is good here. I mean, yeah. it's not, you know, I'm not trying to insult it, but. Um, something notable from Pop Eats is the almond cake that was there last year is gone and they replaced it with rock the dots, white chocolate and orange mousse with vanilla bean chiffon cake. It's basically Minnie Mouse inspired. That sounds better. I didn't really care for so? that. That, um, I don't remember it. It was the, not it was a the good one is the rainbow cake. No, no, no. That's uh that's the figment one. That's the figment one. I thought that booth had though the, the rainbow cake that was there. Or the, have, or the Skittles. Oh, oh, no. I know what you're talking about. It does. It's not rainbow. It has it is different colors. Okay. But the rainbow one with Skittles is is, is the figment one. Okay. Didn't yeah, this yeah. booth have a cake like that, though? They had a similar cake. I know what you're talking about. It was like block. It looked like blocks of color, like different yeah, colors. Yeah. I just remember yeah, I didn't yeah. care for it very much. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's okay. gone, too. But um, yeah, there's also permanent locations that will offer festival items like Connections Cafe, Joffrey's. Refreshment Outpost, Refreshment Port, the Funnel Cake Stand, and Swirled Showcase, which is one of those that they started for the 100th anniversary. So uh, there's lots of lots of options, lots of choices this year for food and drinks at the food studios. Um, but there are some things that are missing that I'm sad about. So. Well, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ugh, anyway, right. it's fine. <laughs> well, the next uh, reason we have for Visit Festival of the Arts this year is the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. So this is the food stroll for the festival. So you purchase five of the possible seven items. Mm-hmm. You have So when you get to Epcot, go get yourself a passport. Mm-hmm. So these are free and it has... Festival passport. Sorry, festival passport. Yes. Your official one. I well, because there's a park passport right. now. And yeah. The one the government gives you, I have no idea. So it's been a long time <laughs> okay. since I've had one. But uh, <laughs> the park, yes, the festival passport, and that's going to have all the information about the booths and like activities and things like that. But you have them stamp, you know, your passport, mm-hmm. and then you can redeem those stamps for a prize over at Deco Delights. Yeah. Usually it's some sort of soft serve in like a commemorative like souvenir Mm-hmm. container like a little cup or glass or something like not actual glass it's usually plastic but yeah some sort of souvenir you can take home yeah i well, obviously we don't know what that is just yet but i it, you're right it's it's usually some kind of dessert so it's good when it's they good to, you, it's good to sample everything too yeah one one year they gave you, i think oh I did, what they didn't advertise they gave you a pin as well if i remember correctly i think it's a oh, disney yeah. i think it's a disney plus launch they give you like a disney plus pin or something along those lines was that at festival of the arts or was that at a different festival I thought that was Festival of the Arts, but I could be. Well, they mistaken. have they have them all. They have one for every festival. Right. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> they all kind of blur together. I mean, that's the one thing about Festival of the Arts is it actually does stand out from the other ones. Because like Flower and Garden has some unique aspects to it. But like when you go to them enough, you're sort of like Flower and Garden, Food and Wine. Like I don't remember. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> one do, of those. Their decorations are different. They're, they are. And that's there why I said go. they have things that are different. But when yeah. you're talking about the food items, sometimes they all start running together. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all right. Number uh, four. Yep. Yeah, next one we have is the Expression Station. And this is a paint by numbers mural, which is always a favorite of ours with our family, especially our daughter. So, yeah, this is this is a big uh, blank. It's a blank mural that is set up on a wall somewhere. And I say that because it is literally in a different location every year. You just have to find it, I guess. Well, next year it was on the construction walls. It was in the construction for like the last couple of years, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. They were like, so, we got all these walls. Let's just yeah, use them. Yeah. So, like, it was over by where Moana is uh, like a couple of years ago. Then they moved it to right in front of the Communicore hall i think or the plaza like that that Mm -hmm. anyway so it obviously they can't do that now because it's gone but anyway so we'll we'll figure it out um so you get a little cup of paint and a brush and a cast member tells you what section to paint of based on like what number you have on your cup and uh so you go to a little section you paint your little squares 
usually it's like five or six you, of the squares you paint. And then you don't, you can toss your, your, the rest of the paint you have, or you can keep it, I guess. I don't know why you would keep it. Um, and then a cast member will give you a little strip of, of paper that has the picture of what the finished mural will look like. Mm-hmm. And usually this is finished before the day is over. Depends on how busy the park is and how much interest there is. But um, I've, I've seen them have to do the mural like three times in one day. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's very popular and it's great to do. Like you said, it's great to do with our kids. Our kids love to do this. Yeah. And you can do this multiple times throughout the day. There's yeah. no like limit on it. So if you want to go through it again and again, and there's usually not much of a line for it. I mean, at, yeah, it goes quickly. I think at the most we've ever waited is like maybe five minutes. So mm-hmm. it's kind of nice. And yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, if you're done color by numbers or paint by numbers, it's just mm-hmm. that on a big wall. And- uh, keep in mind, this is only goes on from 11 to five every day. So only six hours of the, of the park day is available to do this. So yes. Just putting that out there. All right. Number five are the artful photo ops. So you, this is a big part of you've probably seen people people take pictures of these if they gone to it. So you basically become part of the art, as they say. So they have mm-hmm. photo ops that are of famous paintings or pictures. Mm-hmm. And photo pass photographers are usually there uh, at yeah. select times to take pictures of you. So they have like um, George Washington crossing the Delaware. I saw a picture of you doing that it's a great one yeah it's a good one yeah but, but yeah it's also you can like step into it you know yeah, what it's I mean? like, like kind it of a like cut out so it. it looks like and they've got like uh, uh over international see. gateway there's the luncheon of the boating party that what which is, is actually in france by the way they moved it oh they, they did, did move that yes one? Okay. that was that they saw that today um mona lisa the scream frida and there's three new ones um one is from the wish storybook it looks like a a book uh, the other one is uh, Tea Time with Penguins from Mary Poppins. And the other one is uh, the forest scene from Sleeping Beauty when the animals are, look like they're in Prince Eric's like coat oh. and hat mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So, yeah, new new ones this year. It's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. These are, always, again, these are always, well, I should say, always usually very low weights for these usually. Depends on the time of day. Depends on if there's a photo pass photographer out there. Um, but the new ones will probably be busier this year. But. Relatively though, like it's not like you're going to be waiting in line for, a, you know, you, typically it's not like waiting for an attraction. So, Absolutely. Yeah, and our kids always enjoy these and mm-hmm. you can, so if, if a photo, photo pass photographer is not there, then you have to obviously have to take a picture yourself, but usually, you know, somebody can take a picture for you or something like that. Yeah. So, but always, yeah. you know, that's a very unique thing. I always enjoy about this festival. Yeah. But, uh, number six, like we briefly mentioned earlier, is the chalk art. Yeah, so there's a couple different kinds of chalk art. So the, the main one that I always think of is that um, there are art gallery, like looks like art is, uh, uh, chalk art is on the, the ground by like renowned artists, established artists. Some are actually even 3D, where if you stand at a certain spot on the ground, the the uh, the chalk will appear to be a 3D picture. Those are insane. Which is so cool. It's and I don't so, know how they do it's it. It's so trippy to sit there and like <laughs> you can watch them and then it just it does become 3D or like look like there's like a hole in the ground. Mm-hmm. It's it's wild what they can do. And like, yeah. you're watching them. They just have like I'm sure it's a certain, you know, professional grade of chalk, but it's just chalk. Like they don't it's have any chalk. like special tools they're using really. No, and it does take them a bit to, to make these sometimes. Like they've already started their their um their pieces this morning i think this is wednesday so yeah. two days before the festival even started so you can probably find them already there and they're along the bridge to world showcase is where you can find them and they kind of rope them off a little bit so you can't walk directly on them right. which is good um and, and then, if it rains they got to start all over they again. sure do just like when you're a kid and you your art gets messed up on the driveway and it rains speaking of kids there is a kids chalk area that is uh, close by. It's just a place where kids can just draw their own creations with chalk. And you bet your bottom dollar, we did that last year. <laughs> we were required to stop. Well, especially given, uh, I would say, Epcot in general, especially the World Showcase, and most of the time festivals are not the most fun for children. This is mu- this yeah, is definitely an yeah. adult event. But I will say Festival of the Arts does have... If I would say if your child is into art, which ours our children are, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot more things for them to do like this. And yeah. Like our daughter is like we sat there and watched 
and we'll talk about it in a minute, but sometimes the artists will actually do, you know, outside their booths, like doing things like the chalk art and things like she loves watching those. So yeah. why? Yeah. So things like that, like there are more things for kids to do at Festival of the Arts, I think, than, than yeah. say like food and wine. Uh, yes. More than food and wine. There's nothing at food and wine. <laughs> they have kid cot. Oh, well, which that's is the all, same that's thing. The I know it's the same color you paint or you color every single time. But, oh, yeah. But yeah. So yeah, the chalk art though is if you haven't seen it in person, it's very impressive. Yes. Like, yeah, wild. But all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the seventh reason is the artistic performances. So they have the Disney on Broadway concert series that is at the American Gardens Theater. So they have actual stars from Broadway perform songs from Disney musicals. And there are shows from 530, 640, it's not from, sorry, starting at 530, 645, and 8 o'clock. And there are dining packages available as well. So if you want to make sure you have a spot, you can do the dining packages that they offer, yeah. uh, like at Food and Wine for the, the concert series and things like that. So um, those are listed. Do we have a list of those right now? Um, I can put them in the show notes. Um, okay. But um, you guys, if you get a chance, like some of these performers actually perform these these actual songs on Broadway. So they're they're tra- they trained to do it. They're amazing. So if you like the Disney musical scene <laughs> or you like Broadway musicals in general, then this is for you for sure. Not my thing, but Not I thing. But I greatly respect it. Mm-hmm. They're very talented people. But yes, they're good. And they also have music and things going on the World Showcase Plaza stage. And the acts and times are subject to change. And there are art-defying gravity mm-hmm. things that they do. It's so cool. It's like acro when they like balance the person on like yeah. their, their heads. And oh, it's so crazy how they do that. Well, they got the people that like they start, they do like speed painting. Speed painting or upside like, down painting. Which those are always, you see them start and you're like, I know it's going to be something. And like you're almost done. You're like, I have no clue. And they do one thing. You're like, oh, okay. And you're like, and you're like, um, artist that is amazing in front of me how are you doing that like how how can you create that my brain just can't comprehend i'm just not a creative person in this way but i do enjoy watching it oh for you sure know? i mean it's it's a lot like a magician like i'm sure you learn yeah. a certain thing but yeah it's very much like yeah it's it's impressive to see yeah um you yeah know, painting upside down is another thing but then they also have the artists that are at their kiosks as well yeah so this is the thing i briefly sort of touched on but like they have the tent set up and then A lot of times the artists are there to sign pieces that you buy. Uh, And sometimes I know the one, the guy that does all the star Wars stuff. A lot of times they will paint something outside. Exactly. Listen, I grew up, I loved watching Bob Ross paint. I don't know what it is about painting. I can watch somebody paint because it's the same thing watching the speed painting. I'm just like, because I, you know, like I grew up, like our daughter gets it from me. It's like, I grew up drawing. I grew, I drew a ton. I don't Mm. know how many Ninja Turtles I drew as a kid. Like tons of them. <laughs> and so like I'm always mesmerized like what, you know, like how they, their process, like how they start it, where they go and like what it turns into. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I always love doing that. I could stay in there for like an hour and watch it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of connected to number eight here, which is the art collections in general. They have, they have multiple uh, artists and vendors just set up all around World Showcase and even some in the, the world, probably the world celebration area too and the world discovery area. Um, but you can, you can buy some of the art. Now it does get pricey. So sometimes you can buy it like with the frame or just the print. Sometimes they have smaller prints you can buy. Um, they've got like sculptures. They've got um, like uh, the spin art thing where they do that yeah. too. I mean, there's just so much to choose from. Uh, when you're walking around the park. Um, and like Jared said, you can sometimes meet the artist. Uh, one of my favorites is actually Ashley Taylor, which she's been at the festival. I don't know if she's been since the beginning, but um, I, I tend to like see her every time I'm at the festival. And she's just, she's just amazing. It's usually near France, I think uh, around the Wonderground gallery. So if you're over in that area um, and you see some of her art, just, uh, You'll know what I'm talking about, but there's many, many artists that appear and uh, will, like you said, sign stuff for for guests. They'll sometimes create their art in front of you, just talk to you about how they create the stuff. It's like it's it's awesome. Well, and the ones that will paint outside, like our, I think last year we were standing there with with my daughter or our daughter, and uh, the the guy was painting, and his wife was standing there, and of course they were like talking to her, 
And he would go through and he'd be like, do you like to paint? And she was like, yeah, I do. And she, he was like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. And he was like telling her about his whole thing he was doing. I was as much, in, I loved it. I thought it was cool. But you know, if you stand there long enough, sometimes I'll sit there and sort of like interact with you a little bit and talk. So, I mean, if well, you're trying to learn how to paint, I'm sure this probably would be a great uh, thing to do. Uh, as well as, I don't know if we have it on our list here, but they have in the, I think it's in the, the over there by America in the theater there, they have the mm-hmm. animation um where oh. you can they i think they have on stage there and do you can it's like what they have at animal kingdom all the time oh i forgot to put that the animation academy yeah animation academy yes. so they'll have a, they'll have the, a disney animator on stage and they'll teach they'll show you how to it changes per day yeah but it might be like drawing you know simba or a character I forgot to put that on yeah. my list. Okay, this is this is eight A or eight B. Then. Well, we have eleven now. But now we have eleven. <laughs> Oops. Um. Yeah. That's. I think it's at twelve thirty and one thirty every day. And uh, yeah, you just learn how to draw a character. Yeah. From an artist, and yeah, you're right. This uh, this festival is just so much more hands on. Yes. Than which, the other ones. Which what I'm saying. I think this will probably this year become my favorite because I'm very mm-hmm. hands on. And this is our, your thing, man. Well, our daughter and I have done that animation academy before. And uh, I mean, some people will take those classes as, as almost like an art class. Like they'll take it over mm-hmm. and over again. Because it's, and I don't know to what level, but it is legitimately a Disney animator that will yeah. walk you through. And they'll, and like, even if you're not good, most people can come away having something that resembles what they were supposed to draw. Like they'll kind of tell yeah. you like, here's how you yeah. do this and that. So uh, yeah, that's a cool aspect of it as well. Yeah, that. for sure. For sure. So, all right, uh, number nine, and this is not my forte at all, but Jamie can tell you more about it, is the shopping. Yes, shopping, specifically the festival merchandise. So every year they put out a whole line of merchandise that includes spirit jerseys and um, usually Crocs. Usually Crocs are a part of it. Uh, drink. Well, I mean, they are artistic. <laughs> Drinkware, um, home decor, pens. Sometimes you get some mouse ears, sometimes not. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all themed to Figment. Figment's their their guy for for the festival so you'll see a lot of favorite merchandise they gave us a little sample of what we can expect this year and uh i'll need to see it in person before i make a decision if i'm going to buy anything but yeah it's always it's always purple and orange at least in a few few places in the merchandise or rainbowy a rainbow yeah one year they had a, a spare jersey that had figment and like a rainbow color on the back and i was like i almost regretted buying that because I was like, oh, that's a good one. You regretted buying it or regretted not buying it? Regret not. Sorry, regretted uh, not buying it. I didn't buy it. I thought you were that's like, right. Like I don't no, recall seeing it. I don't this. have it. No, you're right. I regretted not buying gotcha. it. Gotcha. Anyway, okay. so um, again, we just seen previews for that merchandise so far, so we'll have a better idea on Friday of what it'll be. Yes. And number eleven now, because we changed our list to eleven, 11. things, is they have the mini festival gift cards. So these are just, they're Disney gift cards that you can always get, but these have little wristlet that you can put on your wrist mm-hmm. and basically put, you can put whatever you want, you know, how much, how many amount you want on there. I think the minimum is $15 mm-hmm. and you can use that mm-hmm. to, you know, especially if you're doing the food booths or, you know, buying anything. I mean, you can do this all the time. Yeah. Um, I don't, do they sell these at like food and wine? I think they uh, do. Yes, they yeah. sell them at every festival. I thought so. So uh-huh. it's not just a Festival of the Arts. I've heard a lot of people talk about it as if this is just a Festival of the Arts thing, but it's not. But it no. is an easier way if you're walking around, um, you know, wanting to try food booths instead of having to pull your wall out every time. Or if you want a bit more, uh, you know, the, the magic band is a little dangerous sometimes because you just start charging stuff to it and you have no scan idea. Whereas and go, scan and go. You can sit there and go, okay, I'm going to spend $100, put it on a gift card, and then every time you buy something from one of the booths, it'll tell you at the bottom how much you have left. So it's a it's kind of a more, uh, it's almost like being on a food plan in your mm-hmm. own way, doing it that way. Mm-hmm. So I always feel like that's an easier way to do it because I do get tired, you know, pulling your wallet out every time and doing that whole thing. It's a little easier. To True. Um, but if you do decide you want to use your magic band, if you have the dining plan, I believe you can use some of your snack credits I think at you, the festival booths. I think you can. Right? Yeah. I believe. They I always have that dining plan little yeah. square. On the, remember? They had them through the menus for like the last three years and nobody had the dining yeah. plan. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's select things. Again, we're not 
experts on the dining plan, but right. I, th- I think you can, you could always ask at the very least. Yeah, and, and yeah, plan. just keep your eyes peeled for that for that that dining plan um, logo symbol, whatever it is. Yes, but, but yeah, the the festival uh, gift cards are really cool, and they do have different versions. So like, um, I think like Flower and Garden always has like Spike the Bee and uh, Orange Bird, and then obviously Figment for Festival of the Arts. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on what the what they're concentrating on this year. But yeah, very very handy, very handy. Indeed, indeed. All right. Well, that's the entire list. Is there anything else that you just now thought of or almost made the list? No, I don't think so. I mean, like th- those are the main things that I really, I really think that should be on the list. Yeah, you know. The thing I was gonna add is I do love like the the art booths are they're so varied. So you've got, I mean, most of it's Disney related, of course, but you've sure. got. Like the Marvel booths that people do different types of Marvel artwork. Um, you have the Star Wars stuff. There's, um, I think somebody had some Pandora stuff one year. I can't remember. But there is some yeah. pop culture stuff. I've seen some stuff with like, uh, you know, like just Chuck Taylors on a thing and things oh, like that. But yeah. it is really cool. Like there's just a lot of different types of art. And like, honestly, it can take you, if you're going to check out all these art, you know, tents, at least in the years past, I don't know how many there'll be this year. I mean, that would take you probably all day like there's a lot of them. oh my god i think yes. i think people kind of get overwhelmed at first because like you have the food booths and then you have all the art tents there's yeah. way more art tents yeah than there are food booths yeah i think you're right for sure um i was just thinking about the the one that had the they use the metal they create yeah. the other things with the metal oh my gosh again the talent at this festival is just unbelievable and it just it honestly like it, it, not, i'm not an artist and you know jared will attest to that I'm terrible, <laughs> but I can appreciate the uh, the talent that comes out of it. So I think anybody can, you know, you, you just, just got to start somewhere. I'm just yeah. saying, yeah. I'm not, I don't, I can't even draw like a puppy. I tried to draw a dog for our, our daughter the other day and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I can't do this. This is why she always I tried. Stuff. <laughs> I was like, this is the best I can she do. Just She's takes like, stuff to me. she goes, um, I'll go ask daddy. I was like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This is not my strong suit, but like, you want to know how to do math? I got you. She, you're the one to go to for. I math. am yeah. left brained all the way. It is not, it you is, are right brained. Math is not my thing at all. Yep. Um, anyway. Yeah, and like you'll be walking around when they have the artists at the booths, and you'll hear people being like, "Oh, that's that's so and so," and I'm like, "I I I don't like they, they." I guess these people are are obviously well known if you're into that world. I have no clue who they are, but I'm just like, "Oh, that that's cool." Like somebody you know, you'll see them, and so to some people. Mm-hmm. That it could be celebrities around quite a bit. Yeah, and then to me, true. I'm pretty oblivious to who wow. they are, other than like, that's good stuff there. But yeah. if you're into all that stuff, a lot of people will recognize all the artists that are there. Well, but uh, before we close, I wanted to mention that there's something I didn't put in the list just because uh, it's not something I'm excited for. And I, I think you can, you'll agree with me on this. We didn't include Figment's Brush with the Masters Scavenger Hunt um, because. We did it one year, and our kids are just not into it. Well, it's they just a, don't like it's it. It's a different scavenger hunt because it's like you're looking for pieces of art in which he's hiding in it, mm-hmm. and our kids like it. You know, when they've got like Olaf is like on a roof, like things one. like that. I mean, we could try it again without me. I mean, yeah. if you buy the scavenger hunt map, I mean, you can get the prize no matter what. Right, I think so, it's like ten dollars. Right, and, yeah. and there's always a thing with that. So we might try it again, but yeah, the last few times we tried that, especially our daughter, she didn't really care for it too much, and it no. was kind of more. It was a little difficult to find. There were some that I was like, I don't know where this is. Yeah, I cannot find it. And then yeah, so yeah, but that is a thing, and if you yeah. like scavenger hunts, that is one thing that you can take advantage of. So. Yeah, but I just wanted to mention that. So yes, so. All right. Well, the, that will do it for our reasons to go to Festival of the Arts and uh for the show today yes so uh be sure to check us out on social media we are at cap the magic everywhere except for tiktok where it is at capture the magic and we also have the youtube channel like we discussed earlier so uh we have video versions and clips of the show over at ctm podcast uh, on youtube and we have the main youtube channel where we have you know videos like epic epic universe construction updates uh, you know, helpful videos. We've got a video coming out about Festival of the Arts, about, you know, some of the things you can do at Festival of the Arts and why you should perhaps 
go or everything you want to know if you're going to go. And uh, a lot of things that help you have a great trip on top of the podcast. So you can check that out over on YouTube at Cap the Magic. And we have other shows on the network here. So we have CTM Universal, where we talk about Universal Studios. That's twice a month. And we just had an episode coming on Monday where we discuss... What did we discuss again? I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, we discussed... Remember we did the, the tiered list of yes, the rides? Yes, ride tier list. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. So we, yeah. we ranked... Uh, in a tier list, all the attractions and shows over at Universal Studios, the main mm -hmm. park. And then mm -hmm. we will be doing the same for Disney as well as that was. I think that was pretty fun, don't you think? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And then Jamie has Trip Tales, which is our trip report show. And what's the next one there coming out? Uh, it should be Monday. If scheduling works out and everything, I should be able to get it out on Monday. All right. And of course, if you want even more content, uh, head over in, uh, to uh, Club32, ctmvip.com. It's where you go for that, and uh, that'll do it. So thank you, everybody, for listening and or watching. And thank you, Jamie, for joining us. Thank you. And as Jamie always likes to say, we will see you in the parks. Bye. <laughs>